The eternal debate, whether man landed on the moon and whether he orbited in outer space at all, seems to be becoming more and more relevant to date. On the other hand, the proponents of the theory that we not only went into space, but even that we found traces of life in the dark part of the moon are strengthening their position more and more seriously from year to year. This fact has fueled not only by the recent orbits of Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos, but also by the fact that, as technology advances, we are increasingly witnessing disturbing reports from former or current NASA employees. The former head of data and imaginary control at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, Ken Johnston, reveals a dark side of space exploration. Johnston, who had the opportunity to work at the Lunar Receiving Laboratory during the Apollo missions, is now known for making claims that go beyond our perceptions of what happens beyond Earth. According to him, the Apollo team stumbled upon evidence of an ancient alien civilization. They discovered entire cities and ruins of high-tech machinery on the moon. These discoveries, according to Johnston, hold the potential to redefine our technological capabilities as some of the devices found may influence gravity. This information, however, has not been well received by NASA. Johnston says the agency tried to cover up the findings and forced him to participate in this manipulation. His decision to speak out loud led to accusations of lying and dismissal. The scandal surrounding NASA's cover-up of information is nothing new. Over the past four decades, various scientists, engineers, and technicians have blown the whistle on the agency accusing it of withholding important data. Accusations range from covering up evidence of anomalous space objects and discoveries of artifacts on the Moon and Mars to refuse to acknowledge the existence of extraterrestrial life discovered by the Viking spacecraft in the 1970s. At the center of this space thriller is the case of Ken Johnston, who reveals the dramatic details of the Apollo missions. According to him, the astronauts took photographs of strange artifacts during their off-ship activities on the moon. But where are these images today? They could have reimagined our view of the cosmos. According to Johnston, NASA ordered the destruction of all the photographs while it was working at the JPL Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Rather than follow instructions, Johnston refused to destroy the images. The scandalous revelations continued to envelop NASA, provoking even greater distrust and suspicion of the institution. Then Kay Ferrari, director of the SSA program at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, steps into the spotlight as she attempts to justify to the media the backroom dealings associated with Ken Johnston's subsequent firing. In her public statements, she states that she asked Ken to resign for publicly criticizing his employer. Ultimately, Johnston, while not resigning, could not escape the critical eye of his employer after accusing the agency of covering up evidence of ancient alien cities on the moon. He was fired immediately after he refused to resign. Subsequently, in testifying his expression of frustration with the U.S. government's long-standing suppression of information related to the moon. But Johnston isn't the only one to encounter the giant of space exploration. Gilbert Levin, a scientist in the 1976 Viking mission, blew up the public with his claims to have discovered microbial life on Mars, even though NASA denies the fact. We got positive data that met all the criteria set before the mission that proved the existence of microbial life in the soil on Mars, Levin told National Geographic. His fury even led him to create a website, www.gillevin.com.
Hollywood.com, where he attacked the agency and screamed at the world that life did exist on the Red Planet. Dr. Gilbert Levin died on July 26, 2021, at the age of 97. But the criticism about concealed and incorrect information related to Mars is not only from him. On the contrary, many space scientists have challenged NASA on yet another deception the agent has perpetrated for decades. At issue is the color of the Martian sky. For years, the space agency has published photos of Mars with reddish skies and a rusty red landscape until independent researchers and Mars missions undertaken by the European Space Agency, ESA, revealed that the Martian sky actually looks very similar to Earth's and the Martian landscape looks a lot like the bright salmon-colored terrain of the American Southwest. On this very subject, we find a wonderful article by Holger Eisenberg on the German website mars-news.da entitled The Color of Mars, in which with photography evidence that this is shown and is explained in detail. The controversies, however, do not stop here. Donna Herr, a former NASA contractor, has exposed the agency's photo manipulation, claiming that thousands of images have been doctored or hidden over the years. The content of these photos, according to her, was deleted or deliberately blurred to hide extraordinary anomalies. Donna Herr is not just a critic of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, but a former employee of it, a contractor with a considerable seniority at the agency. For more than 15 years, she was part of the NASA team, handling the technical illustrations and preparing the photographic slides. Her professional work has been recognized with a number of awards, including the 1969 Apollo Achievement Award, a Skylab Award, and a special commemorative medallion of merit for the joint U.S.-Russian Apollo Soyuz space mission. In her years of service as an agency contractor, her has produced illustrations of space vehicles, satellites, launch pads, landing sites, and lunar maps contributing to the visualization of the agency's ambitious projects. However, she has been not only a witness, but also a critic of practices at NASA that she says involve tampering with, blurring, hiding, and even destroying photographs and data. After her decided to publicly state her accusations, she appeared as a guest on the WOL AM radio show in Washington, D.C. Her testimony elicited strong reactions. While some supported her and condemned NASA's actions, others remained skeptical of the accusations and rejected her thesis. The hair case not only reveals possible lapses in information management by NASA, but also highlights the controversy and debate that continues to swirl around the space agency's activities. In the chilly December of 1972, two Apollo 17 astronauts, Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt, spent nearly 75 hours on the mysterious lunar surface. Amid the endless expanse of the lunar landscape, they allegedly discovered something that would confound and shake them. Cernan and Schmidt take a picture of a strange object that at first glance looks like the severed head of a robot. Cernan is stunned by the discovery unable to believe his own eyes. After the initial shock, he realized that it can't possibly be a human skull. The object lies in the fragments of a crater formed after a powerful impact, a place where all sorts of debris is scattered around. Something as fragile as a fossilized bone could not survive such an impact. The next part of the narrative leads to the observation the exposure to extreme solar and cosmic radiation would have long ago turned the organic material into fine dust. There is no explanation other than that the object is mechanical, no doubt something artificial. Color analysis shows a distinctive red stripe around the area where the upper lip of the head should be. 
This feature appears to be painted or iodized on the surface. Further analysis reveal that the head has all the features of the human face, eyes, forehead, eyebrows, nose, cheekbones, and upper jaw. Only the lower jaw appears to be missing. Cernan calls the site of the find a mysterious looking place. With many of the rocks around having unusual spectral qualities, reflecting light like crystals or shiny metal boxes. This head was photographed by the astronauts at Shorty Crater. So far, the scientist community has not provided a satisfactory explanation for this mysterious artifact. And while the mystery remains unsolved, it remains as a testament to the extraordinary and unexplained phenomenon that the moon still harbors. One of the most mysterious craters on the lunar surface, Aristarchus, hosts a number of amazing phenomenon that continue to fascinate scientists. This crater, known as the brightest spot on the moon, observed from Earth, has recently revealed a new secrets to the global scientific community. In 1958, the Russian astronomer Nikolai Kozarev was the first to note the strange phenomenon in Aristarchus crater. Since then, sightings have continued with even the crew of Apollo 11 also reporting on the incredible phenomenon in the crater region. It is believed that the changes in the crater's color and the emission of gas may be related to a potential power device, possibly a fusion reactor, located within it. All of the images released by NASA show this area as a bright white spot, which supports the theory. The story continues with the tale of the Russian Luna 9 probe, which in 1966 sent photographs back to Earth that revealed another mystery. The photos show an object that resembles a large craft or space vehicle that has the shape of an ocean liner. A cable or tube appears to be coming out of the object and reaching the lunar surface. Despite the brief contact with Luna 9, the images send the scientific world into a new direction of thinking about the potential secrets the moon holds from us. Having learned all this, we now turn our gaze back to Johnston, this time in the company of a former NASA consultant, Richard K. Hoagland, an aerospace engineer consulting Mike Vara. Together in 2007, they published the book, Dark Mission, The Secret History of NASA. It describes in great detail the stories of astronauts discovering an ancient city with absolute machines of unknown origin abandoned on lunar soil. They even find some sort of gravity control machine. And it wasn't just that. There were a bunch of other interesting things. It is in this book, albeit very low resolution, that the photographs Johnson had to destroy were published. These, although of poor quality, show ruined buildings with huge glass domes, as well as stone towers that look as if they were sitting in the air. Despite all the negatives expressed so far towards the government and the agency, the authors of the book argue that President John F. Kennedy, who encouraged the space rapprochement with the Soviet Union, actually intended to share the alien technology with Moscow. Even in a speech to the United Nations in September of 1963, Kennedy made a proposal to the USSR to organize a joint mission to the moon. Eventually, Russia, China, Japan, and even India publicly stated their plans to work toward lunar exploration. This is the reason why the U.S. is in such a hurry to be the first to approach the antiquity of the moon. If we accept for a moment, even only as a hypothesis, that similar objects could be found on the moon, such as those described, then the question remains whether NASA will take the step towards global discoveries and share them with the people. But there is a second opinion, which is to hide their existence. But why should it do the latter? Perhaps because the traces of hypothetical ancient civilizations would be useless and would challenge our entire history and being. Thus, the conspiracy theory that civilization on Earth was actually an extraterrestrial one and is approximately 103 million years old. 
it started to look a little closer to plausible. Proponents of this hypothesis claim that we actually had colonies on the Moon and Mars millions of years ago. The greatest evidence associated with these claims is the presence of pyramidal structures similar to those on Earth, but which are observed in photographs taken on the surface of Mars and the Moon. A picture of such a structure on the Moon can even be seen on NASA's official website. These figures still there today, built and abandoned. Why and by whom? However, no one knows. Why is NASA zealously trying to keep all these discoveries to itself? Perhaps the organization is on notice that one such announcement would cause a huge upheaval in world society, not to mention the loss of faith in all our government, institutions, and our human history in general that we learn in schools from infancy. One thing is certain, the truth cannot be hidden forever because the evidence is out there somewhere. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and tell a friend about it. Thank you for being with us.